Over the past decade, the prescription of gabapentin and pregabalin has surged significantly, especially for conditions like back and neck pain. In fact, studies show an astonishing five-fold increase in prescriptions. Now, despite their name, gabapentinoids don't interact with GABA receptors. Instead, they likely function by inhibiting calcium influx at neurons in the central nervous system, playing a crucial role in the pain processing pathway. Gabapentin and pregabalin are the two most common medications in this class, but it's essential to note that gabapentin has lower bioavailability and less predictable pharmacokinetics than pregabalin, requiring a longer titration to reach an effective dose. Both drugs necessitate progressive titration, with gabapentin taking about 14 days and pregabalin about 7 days to reach an effective analgesic dose. I think you can already see one of the critical takeaways. Due to their prolonged titration periods, gabapentinoids are unlikely to offer acute analgesia in the emergency setting, which is what we're looking for. Now, emergency physicians may consider prescribing gabapentinoids for painful diabetic neuropathy and post-herpetic neuralgia, which is supported by Cochrane Reviews in 2017 and 2019. The NNT for gabapentin and pregabalin in treating diabetic neuropathy and post-herpetic neuralgia is quite promising for achieving 50% pain relief. However, the authors in this paper caution against prescribing these medications in the emergency setting due to their long titration periods unless follow-up care can be arranged with the patient's primary care provider in a timely fashion to help with titration and follow-up. Now, beyond post-herpetic neuralgia and diabetic neuropathy, the evidence supporting gabapentinoid use in other neuropathic conditions is limited at best. In fact, a meta-analysis in CMAJ in 2018 found no significant effect of gabapentinoids in treating low back pain, one of the most commonly cited reasons for prescribing it in the emergency department. From my experience, it seems a lot of emergency physicians describe gabapentinoids to avoid an opioid prescription and all of the associated side effects. However, what are the side effects of these medications? Well, they sound a lot like opioid side effects. This includes dizziness, somnolence, gait disturbances, and GI issues. In addition, peripheral edema and blurred vision are commonly reported. In fact, the number needed to harm for any one of these side effects is around 8 for gabapentin, and they occur in a dose-dependent fashion. Let's talk briefly about one of the most serious side effects, which is respiratory depression. There's a notable risk, especially in the elderly patients or those concurrently taking opioids or sedatives. Combining opioids with gabapentinoids significantly increases the risk of opioid-related death, as indicated in a recent Canadian study. Finally, patients with CHF or reduced ejection fraction should also steer clear of gabapentinoids due to the risk of peripheral edema and weight gain. Renal impairment would also be a concern given that gabapentinoids rely heavily on renal clearance for elimination. In conclusion, while gabapentinoids may have their place in managing certain conditions, as we talked about, herpetic neuralgia and diabetic neuropathy, the evidence and risk suggests that emergency physicians should exercise caution in prescribing them. And if prescribed, close monitoring and a thoughtful approach to titration and discontinuation are crucial.